Yo, in today's video, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to build the best gaming PC money can buy for $850. It's going to be good for streaming, for gaming, for video editing, and has a really good upgrade path. I'm going to have everything listed down in the description below, as well as counterparts, in case something's out of stock or the price goes up on something, which will perform similar. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, first things first, take out your ASRock B550 Pro 4 motherboard. Go ahead and open it, you're going to find the motherboard inside of an anti-static wrap. Then below it in the box, you're going to find the motherboard manual. You're going to find some M.2 screws, a SATA wire if you're using a hard drive, and a disc that you won't need. Close back up the box and then put your motherboard on top of it for an easy resting point, And then take out the styrofoam around it. Next, take out your Ryzen 5 5600. This is a 6 core 12 thread processor. It has slightly lower clocks than the 5600X, but you're saving about $40. You would not be needing the stock CPU cooler. Take it out gently, making sure it doesn't fly off and then some of the pens will end up being bent. On the CPU socket on your motherboard, you'll see a small little retention lever. Push it down and up. And then line up the triangle on the CPU with the triangle on the motherboard and slot it in. It should fall right into place. You don't have to put any pressure down that could actually damage it. So you should just feel it pop right in. Next, take your 16 gigabytes of Patriot Viper RGB RAM at 3600 MHz. Unbox that, be careful not, not to damage it because that can easily be done. And on this motherboard, unlike others, you only have to push back the top two retention slots of the RAM. Usually in other motherboards you have to do on both sides of the RAM slot. So you're going to be inserting it on the second and the fourth slots. Make sure that the notch in the middle of the rim is lined up with the motherboard and push it in. Also make sure that the Viper Tech is facing away from the motherboard. You will hear an audible click when it is installed correctly. If something doesn't feel right, please stop. If you damage the RAM dim slots, then it's going to completely ruin the motherboard and there's really no way of replacing it. You're just going to have to get a whole new motherboard. Next, locate your M.2 heatsink. It's going to say M.2 armor on the top left of it. Unscrew the two screws holding it down and unpeel the blue plastic on the back. Next, take your 500GB WD Blue SN570 SSD. This has read speeds of up to 3500MB and write speeds of up to 3000. 500GB is more enough to get your operating system as well as a few games onto your PC. However, in the future, this would be one of my first upgrades to upgrade to higher storage. In your motherboard box, there should have been a bag of screws. Inside of that bag, there were some standoffs. Install it into the furthest left screw spot in the motherboard. Take your M.2 NVMe SSD. There's a small notch cutout and line it up with the notch cutout in the motherboard. There should also be an audible click when you plug it in. Once you do that, take your M.2 screw that was also in the motherboard box and screw it in. If I haven't mentioned already, a multi-purpose screwdriver is very useful, so I'd recommend using one of those. You can now take your M.2 heatsink with those two screws, screw it back in. Next, there will be two plastic brackets, one on top of the CPU, one below the CPU. Unscrew those, you will not be needing it. Now we're ready to prep the case. On the front glass panel, there's going to be four thumb screws. Unscrew those and take out the glass panel. Then on the back of the case, there's one fan that we're going to be unscrewing because we're going to be removing it to the top later. Then in your motherboard box, there was an IO shield. Take that out of its plastic wrap and install it into the case. There will be clicks on each four corners when it's installed correctly. Then take your Aquafusion with 20mm AO. Locate the two AMD mounting brackets. Also, if your fan is not installed already, go ahead and install that. Mine already came installed, so don't have to worry about that. With the included screws, install them onto the sides of the AIO. Next, locate the included backplate and find the slide that says AMD on it. Next, take the long silver screws and put them in the same holes that I am. And then take the black cylinder thingy with a hole in it and push that down to secure it in place. Next, take the black standouts and place them into the screws. There should be a slight resistance because it's not supposed to just easily come off. It is supposed to hold the screw into its place. And 
lastly, take your included motherboard screws and screw it into the case. It's okay if not all the screws are screwed in, but at least if there's enough to keep the motherboard in place, that would be good. And now we're ready to install the radiator. Make sure that the tubing is facing up and then take the four small screws that are included with the AIO and screw it in. If you're having a hard time placing the screw in, use your fingers first and then take a screwdriver and screw it in. Now it's time for the thermal paste. Included with the CPU cooler, there's a small tube. If you're not sure how much to place, think about how much liquid would actually go inside of a pea. It's better to put too little than put too much. Next is a very important set that if done wrong kills many people's computers. There's a small little piece of plastic that's underneath the water block. Please remove that. Next, take these thumb screws with springs on it that's included with the AIO and install it. When it's all done, it should look like this. Next, on top of the motherboard, there's a 4-pin slot that says CPU cooler. Install the white cord that leads from the water block into there. Next, take the cable from the radiator and plug it into the slot below the radiator. It should say 3-pin CPU cooler. Now, route the other half of that cable to the back of the case and locate a thin black cable coming from the top left of the case in the back, which connects to the fans and plug it together. Take the white CPU fan from the AIO and plug it into this addressable header slot right here. It's going to be a tight squeeze but if you push hard enough it should be able to get in without trying to break anything of course. Now it's time for the PC cables. Take the HD audio cable and plug it into the very bottom left port on the motherboard. Make sure you have the holes lined up because on one side there's one missing, so if you would put it in wrong then you're going to break something off, probably. Then locate the black cable titled USB and then plug it into the spot corresponding in the video. Now we're ready to reinstall that fan that I told you to uninstall earlier. Take off the magnetic dust cover from the top and install it on the furthest right on the top. As you see, I'm only using two screws because two of mine got severed because these are plastic screws. Then route the fan cord to the back of the case and plug it into the, where the other fans are. Now for the dreadful front IO headers. I'm not going to show you exactly how to do it because it would be way too complicated and confusing. So I'm going to show up a diagram from the motherboard user manual. Now take the huge cable that has a blue end to it, which is a USB cable, take it through the side hole and plug it in where I showed right now. We're nearing the final stretch, so now we have to get ready for our power supply. So then I'm going to be using the EVGA 750GA Supernova. This is a, a B tier power supply, 750 watts, and it's, and it's 80 plus gold tier rated. This is a fully modular power supply meaning you can unplug and apply the cables which helps a lot for cable management. There would be a lot to explain so just follow exactly what I do. Once we have all the cables in, we're ready to install the power supply into the power supply shroud. Use a four included screws to screw it in from the outside of the case and make sure that you're not smushing any of the cables that are already there. Make sure to move them out of the way. Now we're ready for the fun part. Go ahead and unscrew this bracket and then unscrew the top PCIe cover. Once you do that, break away the second and top PCIe cover as well. Next, locate the PCIe Gen 4 slot on your motherboard and push back the retention clip. The graphics card of choice for this video is a GDX 1070. I know it's not the newest card, but it performs actually like about 5% better than the RX 6600 
And if you go on eBay for used, you can find it for $200, which is a lot better than the $300 that you're spending for the RX 6600. Remove the cover if there is one, line it up and slide it into place. There will also be an audible click. Take two of the motherboard screws and screw in the graphics card as you see here. Now you're ready to put the cover on it you just took off a while ago. Next, go to the back of the case and plug in from the SATA port to the Molex connectors that lead from the fans. I went with some PSU cable extensions from Color Mod. they're in light blue. I'm not going to show you how to put it together because that would take forever, nor will I be including it in the budget. And finally, this is optional uh, a Wi-Fi card. This is from Viewbit. It has 5400 megabytes in total download. I'm showing you how to install it. Break off this PCIe cover slot here and install it into this PCIe Gen 3, I believe, or Gen 2 slot. Then take the included cable and plug it into the side of the Wi-Fi card and then plug it into the USB slot in the motherboard. Then take the two antennas and screw it in. If they are facing up, they will have the strongest signal. Now it's time for cable management. Unfortunately, this case does not have the most room for it. However, it does have a hard drive shroud area where I stuff most of my cables in. I didn't do the best job, but to be honest, nobody really looks back there. Now you can put your backside panel on. If you're having troubles closing it, then make sure that there's no cables in the way. And now for the satisfying peels off the glass. Sorry for the extreme overexposure, but now you can take those four thumb screws and screw it back into the tempered glass in the front. And congratulations, you just spilled a gaming PC. However, we're not done. You have to now install Windows and some drivers. Go to your web browser, type in Windows 11 ISO, and click on the Microsoft link. Scroll all the way down to Windows 11 ISO disk, click install, choose Windows 11, click install, choose a language, wait for that to load, and then click Windows 64 bit. It is quite a large file, so it may take a while to download. You need at least a gigabyte flash drive because this file itself is five gigabytes. The file is finished. Go to the link below that in the description, which takes you to this page to download Rufus. This is the app that will allow you to use the flash drive as an actual boot drive because you need to install settings for that. Scroll down. Don't look at any of the advertisements because those will give you a virus. And click this download button right here. Next, open up Rufus and copy these exact settings I have down. Obviously, your device is going to be different depending on what flash drive you have plugged in. Once you have that ready, just click start. Click OK. Wait for all the files to copy, it will take a while. The next step is to make sure that you have the power supply plugged in and you have the switch turned on. And then if you're going to use HDMI or DisplayPort, then don't use the motherboard port, use the graphics card port, otherwise you won't get a post. And then assuming that the monitor is turned on and is plugged in correctly, then you press the power button with the USB plugged into the computer, and then you should get a post. So once you turn on your computer with the flash drive installed, 
you will be eventually loaded into Windows, do the installation process, I don't really have to go over that because it's kind of simple. But even though you have Windows 11, you're not going to have the full activated Windows. There's going to be a watermark on the bottom right of your screen. You might have saw that like through my videos because I haven't paid for it either. But I don't have affiliate code, but I will put one in the description of this video. Try, I'll try to find the cheapest one I can. So you just copy and paste the activation code into Windows, like click on the Windows bar and then search um, activate Windows and then you paste that key in. But Windows will still be fully functional with, with that watermark in the bottom right. This next step only applies if you have a high refresh rate monitor. Right click on your home screen and click display settings. Go down to advanced display. Select which monitor you have and make sure it's set to whatever refresh rate it is. If you have a 60 hertz monitor, this is not going to affect anything. Next, restart your computer and spam F2 on your keyboard. This will take you into the computer's BIOS settings. Then you're going to go into OC Tweaker. Go down to RAM frequency and select 3600 MHz. Then go to AMD XMP settings and enable XMP 2.0. This will allow your speed to run at the full 3600 MHz instead of 2133 like it was defaulted to. Now finally, you have everything ready to go. You can start downloading some games and enjoying them. Speaking of them, here's the benchmarks. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. I really thought I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to leave a like on this video or and subscribe to my channel. That helps me out much more than you could possibly imagine. Enjoy the benchmarks. Until later, goodbye.